Evelyn moved to this house in Woodford about 40 years ago, one of the attractions was this huge back garden, which, although incredibly overgrown, had great potential. Now, whilst clearing this part of the garden, Ron found what he thought was a Roman purse. It was in remarkably good condition, so he carried it carefully back into the house to examine it more closely. Imagine his excitement when he found inside not Roman coins, but modern money. Well, modern for 1961 anyway. It turned out that it had been dropped by a friend who had been helping him clear the garden. Well, since then, various items have been found throughout the garden and in the field beyond, all dating from the latter part of the 20th century. This bear, for example, was found behind some lupin bushes in the autumn of 65. He'd been missing for several months following a particularly fraught game of hide-and-seek. Just what has been going on here for the last 40 or 50 years? You can imagine, can't you? Small children running around, falling over occasionally. Perhaps people having birthday parties, planting vegetables or picking ripe fruit. Strangers letting themselves in through the back gate to steal the lawnmower. Ron and Evelyn contacted us to see if we could uncover anything else which had been lost in the garden and the surrounding area over recent years. And Grime Team have just three days to find some answers. of Ron and Evelyn's back garden. So Mick, where do we start? Well, we know from Ron's preliminary poking about that the majority of the finds occurred in the part of the garden here in the vegetable patch. I noticed that there's a reference to some artefacts being found outside the garden. This would be in this area here around the lake, would it? Yeah, all, all of these large items were pulled out of the lake itself. Well, that's interesting. This looks like it's been deliberately broken. What, a votive offering, you mean? Oh yes, they are broken, aren't they? Uh, I wonder if it could have been a ritual site. So, Mick, are we going to start with the lake or the garden? Well, we were originally asked to look at the garden. So I think that we'll start with some geophys around here and possibly put the odd trench in across here. And I think we should be able to tell quite a lot from that. There's also an interesting anomaly uh, out in the field which could possibly be an Iron Age roundhouse. Ooh. So I'd like to see some GFAs done there later. Ooh, got ah, but then you'll miss the point where the Roman coins were found, I mean. Can I just point out, Phil, they weren't actually Roman coins? Oh, ah. Well, what we need to do is to get an accurate plan. All the information collected, and at the end of the day, we can present Ron and Evelyn with a nice clear picture of what went on here. And as we've got just 72 hours to do all that, we'd better get started. This is some archive footage of Ron and his friends clearing the undergrowth during the early excavations in 1961. You can see how overgrown it was. So Ron, you've been here since 1961. Yeah. And uh, I understand you did a bit of excavation work in the early days. Yeah. And uh, uh, someone told me that you uncovered a purse which had some modern money in it. Where exactly did you find it? Under the ground. Under the ground. And I was amazed it was preserved so well. Yes. Anyway, uh, Mick, how's things going here? Well, we've decided to position our first trench here. As you can see marked up by the pins here, 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 here. See? And the GFS team over there are doing the first magnetometry survey. So everything's underway then? Yes, we've just got to wind Phil up and let him go. Look at that! Well, that's not a bad start. Alison, what do you make of this? 
It's a, it appears to be a drinking vessel of some sort. There's writing on it. Intercity couriers. And a number, possibly a phone number. I'd have to check, but this bit here, 01, I think that's the ancient code for London. Mm, and a date? Mid to late 20th century. Well, can't you be a bit more precise? Well, I'm guessing, but maybe around 1930. Early evening anyway, on the 12th of June 1988. Great! Right. So, this could be evidence of a huge amount of commercial activity. I mean, to support a dispatch company, there would have to be offices and factories. I mean, maybe a whole town. After all, the workers would need somewhere to live. I mean, there could be an entire city as yet undiscovered. No, Tony, it's just a mug. We wanted to get a good overall, uh, overall view of the general area surrounding Ron and Evelyn's garden, which was all the excuse Mick needed to jump into a helicopter. I can see we're coming over the garden now. Oh yes, there it is down there. Lovely view, yes this What's is all. What's that? There, look, that's under the trees. Oh yes, they look like handles. Oh, we'll have to have a look at that when we get back down there. Maybe we'll get some uh, geophys results and might show something up. Oh yeah, there's the geophys there. You can just see them working in the bottom of the garden. So they are. Oh look, and there's a parch mark. So wow. there is, look, it's like that Iron Age. Ah! <laughs> and we come. <laughs> That's better. That was close. And there's the, oh, there's oh, the there's lake the at lake, the yeah. end there. Great, what an overview. Always good to come up in a helicopter. Back at Trench 1, Phil really seems to be getting on well. Neolithic Arrowhead. Paleolithic Andax. Is it alright if I get in the trench too, Phil? I'd rather you didn't. So, John, let's see what you've got then. Well, these red blobs represent areas of high magnetic disturbance, which probably means... Hey, Tony! Tony! Down here. Is this a standing committee then? Have a look at these geophys results, Mick. Oh, wow, they're very impressive, them. What are all these red bits? Well, if anyone would let me get a word in edgeways... These here blobs would be metallic objects, wouldn't they? So we could put another trench in here over this one. Doesn't this blob correspond with those handles we saw from the helicopter, Mick? Oh, yes! Well, take a closer look at that later. Another thing we saw from the helicopter, John, was some parch marks in the field over there. So I think we need to get some geophys going out over there. Can you lock get out of my bloody trench? So, with Trench 1 well underway, Carenza is making a start on Trench 2, here where one of the large anomalies showed up on the geophys results. And in the field, the geophys team are beginning their resistivity survey of the round feature we think may be an Iron Age site. In order to establish a date for the motorbike that was found in the lake, we've called in the services of Dick the MIG, who is using a new technique known as dendrochromology. So, Dick, can you explain this technique to me? This is a relatively recent method of giving quite precise dates for archaeological finds where metal has survived. It's based on the idea that rust layers vary from year to year according to the weather conditions and that patterns of greater and lesser corrosion can be compared from one metal object to another and from area to area. By working backwards from new metal structures, metal in vehicles still in use and excavated items, a master chromology can be built up. Any metal discovered in buildings, vehicles or waterlogged deposits could be compared with the rust layers already known. So, have you come up with a date for this bike? Yes, it looks like it's from around 1980 or so, give or take five years. And uh, would this number plate help at all? Why, Reg? That's uh, 1982, isn't it? Well, if you want to be picky. And in the incident room... 
Hello, Victor. Hello, Robin. So, what have you got for us? Well, Tony, I've been studying the area around Himes Park Lake, or fish pond as it's called in some of the earlier maps. Mm -hmm. A rather derogatory piece of nomenclature, wouldn't mm -hmm. you say? Yeah, but have you actually found anything for us? Patience, dear boy. Have I ever been known to let you down? Now take a look at this. It's a map from 1777 in a rather grand volume entitled Woodford Then and Now. Now here's the lake, shown as part of the land owned by the Himes estate. That's where the name Himes Park originates from, of course. Hyme House here at the top of the hill, now a girls' grammar school. And there's a reference in the Victoria County Histories, a marvellous document, which reads, there were six fisheries in the manor of Walthamstow in 1066, reduced to one by 1086. At Hyam, there was no fishery in 1086, although there were three and a half in 1066. How do you get half a fishery? Is that like half a hull? What, so if it was a fish pond, well, that would be man-made, wouldn't it? Without a doubt. Oh. So. How does that fit in with the Iron Age site that we found in the field? I'm afraid the prognosis isn't good for that one. Although it could have been a Roman shrine, they tended to have that sort of thing close to a ritual lake. Mm. Roman? Well look, well look, I'm going to find Mick and we're off to the lake. We can do a bit of field walking on our way to the lake, can't we? If you like. Ah, what do you reckon of that then, Mick? Well, it looks like a ball. Oh, look, it's got teeth marks. Oh, hello, Stuart. What are you doing down there? Studying the lumps and bumps? Oh, hello, Mick. No, I just thought I could use some exercise. What do you make of that sort of round feature up on top of the hill there, Stuart? Robin thinks that it's a Roman shrine. No, no, that's modern, that is. Oh, no, that couldn't. How could you possibly consider that to be modern? Because it is, Mick. No, 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 it's a green belt round here. It can't be modern. Well, either way, we'll know more when we get the GFIS results. Come on, Mick, let's get down to the lake. So, this is where most of the artefacts were found, Tony. So this could be a significant religious site, then? Yes. So, what's that sticking out of the water, then, Mick? Well, I don't know. Um, well, let's photograph it for the record, and uh, then we'll yank it out. There's some fine craftsmanship here. Oh. All these tiny little welds. Can you see them? Look. What do you think it is? Well, I'm not sure, but it's obviously a container of some sort. Mm -hmm. And mobile, see? The wheels, yes, definitely. Mm. And there's some writing here. Uh, cuneiform, hieroglyphics. Oh, yeah. Mac St. Michael. Patron saint of shopkeepers? Mm. Well, I think we should take it back to Alison up at the incident room and see what she has to say about it. Righty hope. Oh. Oh. Yes, well, we just finished this section and... Carenza to Tony. Tony, can you hear me? Tony to Carenza, hello. Hi, Tony. It was really unexpected up in Trench too. I think you should get up here as quickly as you can. Great, we'll be right on over. Come on, Mick. They've got something in Trench too. Keep an eye on that.
So, Crenzo, what have you got? This is really unexpected, Tony, that we found human remains. Goodness. Yeah, we'll have to get the screens up. Where's Phil? Has he seen this? I think he's still in Trench 1, isn't he? Phil, are you down there? Hello, Tony. Oh, that's a big hole. I hope you've got something to show for it. Oh, God. Uh... I tell you what, we'll let a ladder down for you. Oh. What do you think of that then, Tony? Well, that certainly looks like dinner taken care of. And this 1902 penny came out the same layer as them their potatoes. 1902. Now that's uh, Edward the Seventh, isn't it? That's right. That makes them King Edward potatoes. So, apart from vegetables and that mug that we found in the first shovelful, have we found anything else? Well, not to speak of, I mean, it is a vegetable patch. And not to speak of means no. <laughs> hey, is that what I think it is? It's a turnip, Tony. But it's beautiful. Hey, come and see what Carenza's found in Trench 2. Ooh, what are teeth? I wonder where they got to. So, end of day one, uh, we've got a sack of spuds, some teeth to eat them with, and a mug to drink out of. So I guess we're all off to dinner. See you after the break for day two. He waved as he passed the toilet. Day two. They were still oh. hard at work hanging. Oh. Goodbye, See you tomorrow. Oh, we haven't got much further. Oh, still, it was a hell of a party, wasn't it? Do come along, you lot. Rise and shine. I was watching that. I've been studying these new geophys results, and I must admit I'm unable to extract one iota of information from them. Oh, yeah, that'll be Chris's ones you got there. Yeah, John showed us his in the pub last night. Oh no, not again! No, no, the geophys result. It's starting to look like a Mott and Bailey now. Oh rubbish, it's modern. I'm afraid I can find nothing to support that theory, Stuart, my lad. Toodaloo! Anyway, come back after the break for day three. Sure. I think I need to have a word with someone. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Day three, and we've really got to get a move on now. Trench one has been closed down, trench two is still turning up the odd find, and geophys are carrying out their survey of the field. Phil's joining Dick the Mig in his workshop, where he's reconstructing a classic motorcycle like this one, which was found in the lake just a few years ago. Hello, Dick, what's going on here then? Look, let's to get this pile of materials. Now all we need to do is weld it together to make this magnificent motorcycle here. Ooh, voila. So the first thing to do is to pick out the bits of metal that look most like the picture. This, for instance, looks very much like that there. Ooh, voila. So if you'd like to pick out a few bits for me and we'll get started. Here you go. Thanks very much. Here we are where that red blob showed up on the magnetometry survey from day one. You remember, the bit that matched up with the handles that Mick and Carenza spotted from the helicopter. Well, we've brought in the diggers to help speed things up a bit. Hello Phil, I thought we'd better get started. Hey 
Hey, that looks like another old motorcycle. That will do. Well, you could be right there, Phil. Hi, Tony. It's John. Hi, John. Tony here. We've just got the next section of the geophysical road through. Uh, I, I think you'd better... See you in a minute. So what have you got for us, then? Well, if you look at... Oh, yeah, it's typically two to that layout. Where? Just... I'm awfully sorry to interrupt you, but there's something very strange in the greenhouse. I think you ought to come and have a look. Oh yes, it's a bit odd, isn't it? Well, let's get these artifacts recorded, then we can get on and excavate them. What do you mean artifacts? It's just a load of old junk. No, 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 Tony. Modern industrial archaeology, please. Oh. Well, while they're doing that, Let's go and see what's going on in Trench 2. So, Carenza, have you found anything? Hi, Tony. Yes, we're still just starting to get this showing through. We think it may be a dustbin. Show me where you think this is. Well, you see this circle here, Tony? That's the top of it. In fact, Carenza, have you had a look? There's some carbon deposits here, possibly? Hmm, maybe. So... Could that be an incinerator then? Well, possibly. We know they're available at this time. Um, yes, but let's reserve judgment on that until mm. we can get it properly analysed. And is there anything else? Yes, there's a few things. That box there in particular. Ooh. Wow, that's lovely, that is. I think possibly a cigar box uh, from the 50s, 60s. That would make sense. It did come from the lower layers. Perhaps we should take it to Alison and see what she makes of it. Right. Well, I wonder if we get a dendro date from it. And meanwhile, back at the workshop... Hello, Dick. How are you getting along then? Look at this. You can see we've started welding already. Do you fancy giving us a hand? Ooh, well, ah. Now, if you could mount, mount the power supply over there... You are. Now I can get on welding these two bits together. That could take some time, I mean. Funny they could say that. Here's one I prepared earlier. Some of the local children had taken an interest in what we were doing, oh, and as usual, Mick was happy to explain ready. some of the finds to them. I don't recognise any of these, but there's always some interesting things that come out. This one particularly. You see it's all broken. Well, what we'll have to do is piece it all together, and then by the end of the day, we'll discover what's going on. So it's always interesting to find all these things, isn't it? I mean, you, you can never tell, can you? It's absolutely wonderful. I mean to say... And in the incident room... Alison, hi, have you had a chance to look at Carenza's box yet? Hello, Tony. Yes, I've had a quick look. And we've sent it to East London University for some dendro dating. I think it's more likely to be 1550s than 1950s. Wow. Well, hey, that would tie in with that last lot of geophys results, wouldn't it, mate? Certainly would, Tony. Have there been any thoughts on that cart that we found in the lake? Well, the fine construction and small, specially angled wheels would suggest an indoor ritualistic purpose. What do you mean, specially angled wheels? Well, Tony, if you try pushing it, it only moves in a circle. Ah, uh, if that's the case, then I can't see any practical use for it. It must be for ceremonial purposes. If I could be permitted to interject at this point, I do believe I heard the word incinerator mentioned with regard to a certain discovery in the trench of the delectable Carenza. Well, that set me thinking about an aerial photographic reproduction I perused earlier this very day. If one cares to study this particular section, one will notice a bright, gleaming phenomenon just here. I've taken advantage of the technology available to ourselves in order to reproduce an enlarged portion of this section of the visual image. I think that means he's found a photo. To continue, I would tentatively venture to aver that under close scrutiny it becomes apparent that our glowing phenomenon exhibits all the characteristics of a brand new common or garden incinerator. Furthermore, corroborative evidence can be extrapolated, taking into account the motor vehicles located in the grounds. According to my eminent associate in the automotive industry, this particular vehicle is a Magnificiense Cortinaeolis. 
which would have been manufactured by the Ford Motor Company in the late 1970s. So that's an incinerator and this is a Cortina estate. From the family archives I have uncovered this extraordinary document pertaining to the above mentioned vehicle implying that such a model was in fact registered at this very address in the year 1986. Thus we can assume that an incinerator may well have been purchased in that very year. So, the incinerator could date to 86. Indeed. So there you are. That was the time of the exit. Well, time was getting on. I thought I'd better come and supervise change four here. So what have I been missing then? Well, we finished all the recording and we're now finishing the excavation. In fact, I think we're almost there. What, to the anomaly? Indeed. Great. Oh, wow, amazing. My plants, man. They're tomatoes. Was the last time Dad cleared out this mess? The Geophys team had finished their survey of the field, so we went over to give We've John a grilling. The last section, and so these are the results for the whole field. It does look rather like a modern road layout, doesn't it? What have I been saying all along, huh? Okay, okay, but we need to explore every avenue before jumping to any conclusions, and we've still got nothing to substantiate that. Now, uh, now come along, uh, kiss and make up. And at trench three. Hi Phil, how are you getting on with this here motorcycle then? Hello, I'm, I'm sorry to report it don't appear to be no motorcycle. He looks more like a lawnmower to me. Oh, so another disappointing trench, eh Phil? Oh, that's the way it goes, Tony. Ah, oh, but why does it always happen to me? Well, you can't hit a coconut every time. Archaeology isn't an exact science. Yeah, but does that make good TV? <laughs> that's your department, Tony. Well, Phil. I think we can close this one up now. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, let's go and see whether Carenza's had any more good luck. Ooh. Well, Victor, what have you been up to all weekend? Huh, what period is this from then? Whatever bloody period you want. Well, well, Carenza, that's a really nice find, that is. Yes, I think we can safely say it's an incinerator now. So that's just about out now, is it? Yeah, I think we've done about everything we can in this trench. Good, well done. Well, I think we can wrap this one up as well now. OK. Well, Tony, feeling a bit better now? Oh, yes, after seeing Victor's drawing. In the incident room, the finishing touches are being added to some dubious characters from the 70s. We've given you flares and broad lapels. Oh, great. What about a kipper tie? Oh, yes, please. Milk and two sugars. And here are our reconstructions of some of the finds. The gramophone record from Trench 2 has been glued back together and sounds like this. This battery probably came out of this transistor radio, dating from the late 60s. We're hoping that the cigar box, which came out of the trench from the level just below them, will confirm our estimate of their age. It's almost the end of day three. We're running out of time fast, and Robin has come up with this most astounding piece of evidence. <coughs> and you found this map from the 1950s. <coughs> <coughs> which clearly shows a whole network of roads in our field, which was apparently the site of temporary prefabs built at the end of World War II. How well it fits in with our find. So are we all going to agree now that it is in fact a modern site then? So, this is what we think the area of the field would have looked like in the 1950s.
Boy, you get out of here! Mm. So, we're at the end of our last day here. We've got those delicious potatoes from Trench One. And we've also got the dendro results from that wooden box that we found. We think came from the 50s or 60s, Alison. Bad news, I'm afraid, Tony. The box turns out to be late 18th century. Well, that would tie in with Higham House, built in 1768, I believe. But unfortunately, nothing to do with our site here. Oh, come on now, Tony. We had all those brilliant finds from my trench, all those things from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and that incinerator that was dated to 1986. Ooh. And, of course, there's that mug that Phil found on day one. Oh, yes, that. Speaking of Phil, what do you think of that then, Tony? Well, it's a masterpiece. A triumph. So you managed to achieve something this weekend then, Phil. So there we are then. Not a bad weekend. We found lots of things that have been lost in the garden. We rediscovered the site of some post-war prefabs. We looked at a ritual site over there in the lake. Phil helped Dick the Mig to build a motorcycle. <laughs> but I've got a turnip. Definitely gonna finish this soon. Right, Pete, push it over now. It's not that loose. <laughs> Hello, Tony and no. <laughs> Kev, the accent, Fred, Vera. <laughs> Hello, Tony and Mick. That looks <laughs> like you've started another old motorcycle. Hello, Tony and Mick. That's the best so far. Best so far. No, it sounds fun to us. Hey, that looks like another motorcycle. That'll do. Oh, you could be right there, Phil. Where the hell are you, John? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you could be right there, Phil. Hi, Tony. It's John. Hi, John. Tony here. We've just got the next section of the GFPs results. Um, I think you'd better... Remember my next line. <laughs> so, that's got nothing to do with our site here, then? Never mind, Tony. There was all those... Things and what's it stuff. <laughs> stuff that you found. Archaeological stuff. Can I have a script? I only wrote Nobody it. There we go. Is anyone still watching? That incinerator that was dated to 1986. Mm. 
And of course there's that mug that Phil found on day one. How obvious that. Ah! Speaking of Phil, he's just stalled the bike. <laughs> So, what have you got there then, John? Well, these red blobs represent magnetic disturbances, which probably means... Hey, Tony! Tony? Friends out over here, come on. Did it? Yeah. And this 1902 penny came out the same layer as them potatoes. 1902. And that's King Edward, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Phil. How are you getting on with this year motorcycle, then? Well, Mick, I'm sorry to report it don't appear to be no motorcycle. It looks more like a lawnmower to me. Oh, so another disappointing trench, eh, Phil? Why did it always happen to me? <laughs> Gee, get it next time, go on. One more. Hello, Mick, I'm sorry to report it. Don't seem to look like no more. <laughs> it's all right, none of us look like what we're supposed to be. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Roy Chubby Brown. It's <laughs> 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 You know, eye contact. Okay. That's what killed it. Wurzel, stop looking at Chubby. <laughs> All right? Yep. Hi, Phil. How are you getting on with this motorcycle, then? Hello, Mick. I'm sorry to report you don't seem to be no motorcycle. <laughs> it's not funny anymore. Why are we laughing? Right. <clears throat> Concentration. Right. He does. You know what he looks like? <laughs> Some Im improbable male porn star kind of right? gardener, you know, kind of. So you're going to stand oh, up with his shirt off. The, the lady at the manor says, I've got to do all the weeding. <laughs> <laughs> I'll plough her trench later. Hi Phil, how are you getting on with this motorcycle then? <laughs> Speak to us, Phil. <laughs> Ron and Evelyn moved to this part. Good start. First one Ron and Evelyn moved to this part yeah. of the garden. Yeah. <laughs> well, since then, Various items have been found throughout the garden and in the field behind, all dating from the second half of the 20th century. This bear... What you got? Well, this is really <laughs> unexpected, Tony. We found human remains, look. I'm sorry, I thought he was <laughs> laughing. That was panting, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that was puff, pant, puff, pant. So, there you are. That was a timely exit. Huh, well... Time was getting on, so I thought I'd better come a supervised trench for here. So, I need to say something else. Yes, you do. So, there you are. That was a timely exit. Well, time was getting short, so I thought I'd better come a supervised trench for here. So, what... I've done it again. I'm so sorry. You're standing right in front of Mum as well. Right, that's not good. Either. So, there you are. That was a timely exit. Is <laughs> it out of the water then, Mick? I don't know. Um, well, let's photograph it and see what we can remember to say next. Found a photo. To continue, I would tentatively venture to have... A... He's found a photo. To continue, I would tentatively... I think that means he's found a photo. To continue, I would tentatively venture to avert... Oh, I think that means he's found a photo. I think that... I, th I think that means he's found a photo. To continue, I would tentatively avert... Venture to... I think that means he's found a photo. To continue, I would tentatively... To, 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 to. Why do I have to say that word? <laughs> To continue, 
I would tentatively... T t I would... No, no, that's modern, that is. How can you even consider that to be modern? But because it is, Mick. Well, it's all green belt round here. It can't possibly be modern. Well, we'll know more when we get the GFIS results. Come on, Mick, let's get down to the lake. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hello, Stuart. What are you doing down there? Studying the lumps and bumps? Oh, hello, Mick. No, I just thought I could dig you, Susan. Mick. Oh, I thought that. Thank God he's fit, eh? <laughs> oh, hello, Mick. What are you doing? <laughs> What's my name again? So, Ron, you've been here since 1961. Yeah. And uh, I understand you did a bit of excavation work in the early days. Yeah. And uh, I'm told that one of your first finds was a purse containing modern money. Where exactly did you find that? Under the ground. Under the ground. And I was surprised it was preserved so well. <laughs> so, Phil, from the, the head... <laughs> Fred, Frederick, <laughs> Fred, Frederick, Tony. So, Ron. So, Ron, we've been doing this scene since 1471. <laughs> 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 <Sorry>. <laughs> it's going to take until 2071 if you keep making okay, everyone right, laugh. Standing committee, then. Yeah, have a look at these GFIS results. Oh, wow, well, they're really good, then. What are all these red blobs? <laughs> they are the cast. <laughs>